Good evening. Today is Thursday, February 15th, 2024, and this is a monthly meeting of the ASCA Board of Directors. Those directors present this evening are myself, Susan Byrne, First Vice President Rick Gann, Second Vice Donna Sims, Treasurer Jody McClellan, Secretary Anne McCabe, Directors Jan Wieson, David Clayton, and Jillian Ward. The first item on the open session agenda is the January 2024 Treasurer's Report. Jody. Good evening. I'm happy to report that we actually have a report for January. Um, the profit and loss statement has been posted so everybody can take a look. Um, we do not have anything yet from December of 23. The bookkeeper has received the final information for the Nationals Ledger and is putting that in um, as we speak. And so we should have the 2023 numbers um, for our next meeting. Uh, if you haven't taken a look, the, the format is slightly different because everything is coming from QuickBooks. But uh, and we've changed a little bit of the coding and names of everything, but it is all in there. And I um, will get to a spreadsheet later to talk about because we do have a couple of things that we need to talk about. But first, let me go over the balances for the accounts. This was as of last night. Our checking account is at 151235 Savings is 25803 the AEMD is at 29,634. Foundation is 40,817. And the 2023 Nationals account is at 29,417. Um, Kala, am I able to share a spreadsheet so everybody can see it? Yeah, you should be able to if you hit share screen. Okay. Okay, can everybody see that? So I've taken the January numbers that the bookkeeper supplied us and used the budget that uh, we approved at um, the nationals meeting and have offset um, our numbers for the income and also our expenses for the month. Um, we did receive some money for the affiliate marketing, marketing, which was quite nice, but I would like to go down because we need to talk about expenses. <clears throat> it has come to my attention when I was going over this that we did not budget for something when we made this proposal last fall and that is basically we didn't budget for our month monthly it uh it looks like we kind of were working on computer uh budget and so in previous budgets it was simply the monthly stuff that we were considering for that and so we were converting it to trying to work for to find a programmer for the system and so we left off the budget for the monthly IT expenses. Um, as David likes to say, it's a, it's a living document. And so we do have the ability to shift some things. For instance, we are no longer paying off the loan payment. And so we had budgeted $60,000 for that, uh, that we can shift to the IT. Also the... Um, I believe the interest interest on the loan, $8,400 that we need to shift. And there's also some extra money in uh, contract labor um, that we can shift. So it will be covered. Uh, we're looking at about um, $100,000 just for the monthly IT cost. So uh, next month, I hope to have this shifted and um, have the IT information placed correctly here. Uh, you can see that this month was a little high at almost $12,000. That also took into account the cost of the new server. 
and um, there were a couple of other one-time expenses. But like I said, the monthly charges for IT are coming in about $8,100 a month. Other than that, there was nothing um, out of the ordinary um, in regards to the to the the expenses that came in. And so I will um, open it up for questions at this time, if you have any. Thank you, Jenny. Does anyone have any questions or concerns about either the monthly figures that were reported or the budget that Jody has presented? Hey, Jody, can you send us that spreadsheet where we have time to really actually look at it? Sure, I can. I can put it in okay. the drive. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rick. Would someone like to make a motion to accept the treasurer's report as reported? Yeah, can I do that? Yes. Okay, sorry. I move to accept the um, treasurer's report as reported. Thank you, Jody. Can I get a second? I'll, I'll second. Okay, I heard Jillian. Thank you, Jillian. Okay, all those in favor of accepting the treasurer's report as presented? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Aye. Thank you, Jody. Okay, motion carries. Thank you for your work on that. And please tell Tim, thank you also. All right, the next item on the agenda is the operational audit, Jody. I mean, sorry, Jillian, excuse me. Can you guys hear me? Cause I'm in another screen. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I wasn't sure if I unmuted myself. Um, okay, I sent you guys um, the link to the template for the operational audit um, for the membership. This is an internal audit that uh, the ASCA board of directors will be conducting each year um, as proposed. We have a motion out right now. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that everybody took a look at it on the board and then um, for the membership, I'd like them to just generally understand some of the components that are involved. Um, for instance, we have a myriad of board members that are working on this. Different people are assigned to different sections, but I'm just going to briefly go through the sections so the membership understands what this consists of. So um, board governance. Um, oops, I skipped. Oh, I went too fast for myself. Technology, hardware, software. Office, furniture and equipment, legal compliance. This is a very busy document right now. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not fast enough. Financial compliance. There were some questions um, on the membership IO group as to or concerns about switching the financial off, uh, audit to every other year. Um, if, if we continue with this operational audit, there are many, many pieces that are addressed on a regular basis, and it will put ASCA in a very good position to ward off potential problems. So um, I think it's just important for everyone to know that this is a working document. This is the first time that we're going to be doing it. There's a lot of people involved. And um, I, I hope that it gives the membership a little bit of comfort to know that we are looking at every, uh, under every little nook and cranny to make sure that ASCA is as stable um, as possible. So, um, 
I'll just open this up to the board to ask if you have any questions. For those that aren't participating, we've taken each section and we have given it to a leader, which is a board member. And then there are several people that are also working in tandem with the board member. We are collecting information. We are sourcing things out. We are making sure we have policies for nearly everything that we can have. Um, this is going to be a central location for all of us to weigh in on and make comments on, and we're refining processes. Um, so does anybody on the board have a question? If not, I just really wanted to make sure that everybody knew what we were doing and that this is, we have begun this process. Thank you, Jillian. My only question is, how do you mark things after you've addressed them? <laughs> so um, it's sort of like you hover over them. Say if you wanted to copy and paste a section, you know, you can click down and select it. When you do that, at the very top under the menu, there is um, a color selector. It's a pencil and it gives you the option of, of marking it in color. I am marking things that we have we do not yet have in place and that we need um, a remedial action in blue and things that are already completed we have underway in yellow um so does that help yes ma'am thank you so and, much and, and just bear in mind for anybody who's using it this is um this is like a note board that you're writing yourself notes and you're able to correspond with other people at the same time. We can all see what each other is working on. And we, the intention is to grow this document. So as an item comes to light that we have not yet addressed as an organization, it will be added on here with the remedy and therefore it will be looked at annually. Um, but a lot of really good stuff is coming out of this because it's prompting the thought so that we can be more proactive as opposed to the other. And as an example, we talked about earlier a few um, items, repair items, for instance, in the office. These are things that are in our annual operational audit. So, so it's not a last minute thing. We can start budgeting well in advance for certain things. And it's just a tool for all of us to use. And I encourage uh, anybody who's not currently working on it next year, when it comes time to work on it, if you want to be a part of it, uh, let me know. And I think please weigh in. Uh, if you're not assigned to something, that doesn't mean that you don't have value and you can't add things. So it's there in in the drive for everybody to view, and I'm I welcome any input. Thank you, Jillian, and I um, just want to extend my thanks to everyone who's already currently working on it and has a piece of it. And please, everybody, get in there and look at it, David. Yeah, um, since we had several comments from members, how is this? This, the shift was that we would do a regular audit every other year instead of annually, as we have done in the past. And several members commented on their concern that some things would slip through the cracks by not having an annual audit. How does this replace that? And how does it provide confidence of our membership that we don't need an audit every year? Um, so the financial audit is done externally, uh, by our CPA and, um, the, they are focused clearly on finance. An operational audit encompasses finances as well as all the other components that, that I just listed, like legal compliance. Our CPA is not necessarily concerned or can they ferret out from a financial audit uh, compliance matters that only an organization can know about. So they should both be done. The benefit to obviously that the the operational budget being done annually, it's it's very clear why that would be beneficial. 
the benefit to obviously saving some money by doing the financial audit every other year gives us a little bit of freedom. But in order to do that, we had to institute the annual operational budget. One thing that I'm not sure that the membership is aware of, of is that we have employed an in-house bookkeeper. And there are now reporting mechanisms in place that may not have been as robust in the past. So it's part of communicating these things that the membership isn't aware of. It's our responsibility to tell them that, which is why I wanted to, to start the dialogue about the operational audit. Once we conclude this, and the first one is more difficult than than the subsequent ones ob for obvious reasons, because we're writing the audit at, and understanding our unique needs as a dog nonprofit. So I can't just use a template for a dog nonprofit. They don't really exist. So we're building those. Once we complete that, we will discuss how to disseminate the information to the uh, membership so that will give them further confidence. But they are different, but they should be done in tandem. Thank you, Jillian. And David, I'd like to tag on to your question just a little bit. You know, there have been several comments about the embezzlement from 20 years ago, basically. Um, the membership needs to know that it is my firm belief at that time, there was no segregation of duties in the paying and receiving of monies in that office. Consequently, that was why it opened up the availability that was taken advantage of to abscond with ASCA money. Since 2013, there has been a separate payer and receiver on all of those accounts. Since the payoff of the indebtedness to um, our previous computer company, programming company, there is never a week that goes by that multiple eyes are not on the bank accounts so that the treasurer, myself as president, we are looking at the transactions per transaction and making sure that those are actual transactions that are organization transactions, that there's no benefit to any individual members of the organization. So those are the things that led us to believe we would be perfectly safe in moving the annual financial audit to an every other year financial audit from that standpoint. I think the perspective of the management of the funds of this organization has taken a slight change in responsibility there. But I also believe that this organizational audit will only help us to be more cognitive of the actions that are going on in the business office and keeping them involved and keeping them also in good communication with the board of directors. So I hope that that answers those questions. Does anyone else have anything that they would like to add on this organizational slash operational audit? Okay, thank you. Let us go forward and we're going to um, talk about the opportunity of establishing the PayPal account. Jillian, I know you've been working closely with Sarah on this. Would you like to address this as well? Yes, I hope everybody is sitting down because I have some exciting news for you. Um, one of the benefits in QuickBooks Online is the ability to accept credit card payments. We can also accept credit card payments through PayPal and Venmo, and we can accept uh, bank transfers. There are some fees associated, not unlike with any other um, third-party merchant service. But the benefit is um, while we are still navigating through the portal and being able to accept money um, from different different methods, we can currently accept it. Um, Sarah and I did a test, was it yesterday, Susan? I've forgotten. 
or the day before, maybe. Um, Yesterday, I believe. And I believe. sent her, um, we had the um, the donation that was made. And I, I asked her to invoice me three different, give me three different invoices for three different amounts. So I paid them. And uh, one was PayPal, one was gosh, one was a bank transfer and one was a credit card and they all successfully went through. Um, the benefit to being able to accept PayPal payments through QuickBooks, you are not required to have a PayPal account to accept money. So we are on to a solution, uh, even if it might be temporary, we are on to a solution to be able to accept um, funds through PayPal, which hopefully will be a good solution for our overseas friends. Um, I'm still working with David on um, how to tackle the merchant fees. That will be um, another conversation at another time. But as of this moment, um, we're able to accept uh, PayPal payments. So uh, it it is... There is a bit of a um, learning curve on how we one goes about doing that, and once we refine that and we've confirmed that how pay how the payments come in, we want to make sure that we monitor. Like being able to bill someone and get a receipt saying that they paid you is one thing, but we want to make sure that the monies actually hit the accounts as we um, identify them to, and understand the fee structure before we can come up with um, a platform to be able to share with the membership. But that should be very, very good news. Um, automation can be scary, but it's also can be your friend if we're all open to it. So Sarah's done a great job and I'm very proud of the work that she's done, but hopefully that will give you a little bright spot to smile about today. Thank you so much. I was excited to see that it was successful yesterday. Thank you again. Okay, that brings us to the system liaisons report, David. Yes. Go ahead. Did we lose you? He's muted. David, can you unmute, please? David, can you please unmute? We can't hear you. Okay, guys. Oh, there you are. You're muted again. Unmute. There you go. So essentially, um, the committee has been kind of quiet. Um, the biggest updates were that for hiring of Veronica and to move forward with that. Um, they do have some suggestions for uh, future work, but um, they've been pretty quiet. So there's not a, a huge report to, to move forward with. Okay, so once we have this programmer on board, do you anticipate that there will be much more communication there between the committees, committee members and yourself? Yes. I think they're going to be able to identify um, how to move forward and try and solve some of the problems that we have currently. And working with Veronica and Heidi, I think um, they're going to be able to move forward and address some of the problems that already exist and how to solve them. That's great news. We'll look forward to that hiring taking place, the onboarding, and 
reviewing the list of things that are going to be in the works and will be addressed initially. Thank you for that update. Okay, um, this is the point in the meeting where we would um, like to go ahead and ratify all of the business previously conducted last month via email. Would somebody care to make a motion? I this is Donna. I'm I move to um accept all last month's email business. I'll second. Jan. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Jan. All those in favor of accepting the business conducted via email during the month of January. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you all so much. That concludes our meeting for tonight. I'd like to thank all of the members who will be listening to this meeting. And I'd like to thank all of the board directors for your time this evening and for your continued work in serving ASCA as an organization. Thank you all. Have a good night. And that will conclude our meeting if I can get a motion to adjourn. I so move, David. Thank you, David. This is Ann. I'll second. All right. Thanks, Ann. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? All right, you all. Thanks again, and have a great evening. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.